Hi, my name is Sally Caselli, and in this set of uh, videos, I'm going to go over some of the new features that were introduced in Windows 10. I'm going to approach this session by first introducing the various features and then potentially explore how to use them and apply them effectively. As you know, Windows 10 has some major improvements, and one of them is the uh, major monthly updates or continuous updates from Microsoft. And therefore, as they update it, chances are that some of those uh, items that I cover here might slightly differ from the later releases. Additionally, Windows 10 has a much faster boot up time. It offers the tablet PC mode or the tablet mode, the voice activated commands such as for using Cortana and enhanced searching and so on. So in this guide, again, I'm going to go over some of those features, introduce them to get a better understanding as to what's happening and what's new and what we can benefit from. So let's start here with the new start menu. As you know, the start menu, it has been redesigned in Windows 10. It's kind of a combination of Windows 7, the Windows 7 menus that we used to have in the past, for example, here by going under all apps. And then also it's a combination of the tiles here on the right hand side that were prevalent in Windows 8. So as we get started here with uh, the new start menu, notice to get to it you have this uh, Windows logo here on the very left. And then a couple of things to note here, the most used applications are going to be here on the very top. Then you have File Explorer to get to access the storage on your devices that you have in this computer then settings, then power options, and then all apps. The all apps here, it's uh, like all programs in Windows 7. Then here on the right hand side you have these tiles. The tiles are basically just these squares with various functionality to them. So the first thing that's learned uh, here is that uh, how to add an application to the tiles area. So to add an application, what we need to do is we go here to the Start menu, and then we click here on All Apps, and then we scroll down and then we pick whichever app we want. So let's say we want Excel 2016. So in this case, we'll just simply right-click, and then we'll choose to pin it to the Start. So to pin it to the Start, meaning it's going to put it right here under the Tiles area. So you can go and scroll down again and pick another application, and pin it as well. So let's say I want Outlook 2016 and you choose to pin it to the start menu as well. Now notice as you start pinning these things in here, notice you can give it a name to this group of new apps in the tiles area. So you can click in here and say, and then notice as well, if you hold the mouse on it, you should be able to move this to another area in here and group those differently. However, you need to group them. You also can move stuff, other icons, in and out of that specific block where you are adding them. So that's how you add an application here to the tiles area and rearrange them. The next, what we are going to learn is, is how to access the various options here, the start menu options. So the, what I mean by that is, is that uh, you have these options right here that you can see the apps and the tiles. However, if you right click on this area for the start menu, notice you'll be presented with a whole bunch of menus. So this is kind of a, an easier and trickier way to get to do certain things that uh, you did potentially in Windows 7 or now you don't know where they are. So Microsoft, what they have done is they have kind of compiled all of these options as well by simply right-clicking on the Start menu. And from here you can access whatever you need to access, for example, Control Panel, the File Explorer, the Searching, you can do from here, the Run Command that we used to have in Windows 7, and so on. So that's another feature here. So to customize the Start menu, what you can do is you can click here on the Start menu, you go under Settings, and then you can go here under Personalization. Under Personalization, notice you have these options that you can customize, such as background, colors, and so on, but yet you have also the Start menu. So it is in here that you can actually go back and customize the Start menu, whether you want to show more tiles, whether you want to have uh, 
a suggestion list on the start, whether to show the most recent apps or not, and uh, so on and so on. So this is where you can customize again uh, some of those additional options on the start menu, on the new start menu in Windows 10. I hope it was helpful. And at this point, we'll move to uh, how to pin programs to the taskbar. That's next. In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to pin an application to the taskbar, how to place an icon here for a specific application on the taskbar of Windows 10. So what we do is, let's say I want Microsoft Excel, we go here under the start and then start menu and then we scroll down and we locate the application that we want to pin to the taskbar. So we go here under all apps and then we right click on Excel 2016 for example and then click on more and then choose to pin it to taskbar. And now notice Excel 2016 is listed in the taskbar in the bottom. You can do that, by the way, even by right-clicking here under the tiles area, and you choose more, and then go and pin it to the taskbar as well. If you no longer need it pinned in the taskbar, you can simply right-click like you did earlier and choose to unpin it from the taskbar. In this session, I'm going to cover the new feature in Windows 10 that's called the Task View option. The Task View option is very similar to the Alt Tab option in the previous versions of Windows. However, it allows you to pick the applications and click on the actual applications that are opened. So for example, in this case, if I click on this little icon here in the bottom uh, left of the taskbar, it'll, it'll uh, display all the opened applications that I have in this computer. So to switch from one to the other at this point, I can simply click on it and it'll take me to that specific application. Then I can go back to the task view and then click on the next one and it'll take me back there as well to the next application. So this is very similar to the Alt Tab feature but uh, in this case, when you release the Alt tab, it disappears. So basically, it's just a way of switching between applications. In this session, I'm going to go over very briefly about the taskbar in Windows 10. The taskbar, uh, just like in previous versions of Windows, it's been there. It's very powerful and useful, of course giving you options for the start menu. And now here in Windows 10, we have here the search box or the Cortana to use, how to use Cortana and such. And then to the right of that, you have all options for the opened applications or the pinned application in the taskbar. Additionally, here on the right-hand side, you have the controls, very similar to in the previous versions of Windows. However, one of the new features here is also the action center. The action center is going to display the various things that are happening in the computer that need attention. Additionally, there are also some options here for changing the rotation and changing the display and all that type of thing in your recording or uh, changing the display or changing all kinds of things specifically in your computer. Now to customize this, you can simply right click and then choose to display certain things. For example, to show or hide the task view option. If that is not useful to you, you can hide it from here. If you do not have um, a touch screen, you don't need to show the keyboard button and so on. And as far as also configuring Cortana, which we'll cover in a moment here. The other thing, there are some additional options here, how to show the windows side by side or to and so on. So one of the other things for you to consider is also under properties here. You can click and customize this further to auto hide the taskbar here in the bottom. Also to use small icons if you needed to and make them much smaller here on the display. And additionally, you can combine certain items as well and the location of the taskbar as well, whether you're on the top, left, or bottom, and so on. Additionally, notice there is uh, also this option for notification area. You can customize what shows up in the notification area. 
and you can click here on customize and then you have actions and alert alerts and choose what shows up in the notification center as well here in the bottom right one of my favorite features in windows 10 is actually the ability to search by using a single key from the keyboard and search for an application, search for files, search for a setting in the computer or whatever that may be. And this was somewhat available in Windows 8 as well, but it's uh, somewhat improved in Windows 10 here. So what I mean is by pressing here, for example, I want to search for Excel and uh, I can click here on the Windows key and simply start typing Excel. Now at this point it locates the application and then I can simply click on it and open it up and proceed from there. Now the other thing that you can use this for is also for searching for specific settings in your computer. So uh, press the Windows key once and simply start typing. For example, let's say I want to adjust the power settings and now this is a new operating system and I need to adjust those power settings. So all I have to do is click here and just start typing power and notice I have here the option for choosing the power and sleep settings or changing the power options and so on and so on. So it's very powerful. You don't have to know where things are. The other thing that is available here in, um, if directly from the desktop is this uh, Cortana or the search box here using Cortana. Personally, I have chosen, I would say, I'm not interested in it. If you choose to, then it's going to record your voice patterns and all that type of thing and keystrokes and so on to customize your experience very similar to that in Android or uh, smartphones or with Google Now or uh, in iOS with Siri. So that's basically the idea there. But let's say I don't want to use Cortana here. I click on not interested and I say I'm sure. Yes, I do. And now from here, basically, it's asking me to search the web or the windows for whatever I want from here. So I could, again, type in here, for example, um, privacy. And notice I can go to the privacy settings, uh, webcam privacy settings and all that type of stuff related to settings in this computer or folders in the computer or applications or other things on the web as well, if I chose to the web option. Now notice as you're using the search capabilities here, there is also an option here for configuring it and you can specify whether to turn on or off Cortana. So if you decide later to turn it back on, this is one way you can turn it back on. Whether you want the search history to be on and so on, uh, if you want to clear it, this is where you clear it. And additional privacy and uh, search engine results because by default, uh, Windows is going to record your search, your searching, so it can give you customized content pertaining to your searches in the future. What I'd suggest using here is using the Windows key for searching for anything at any point, and this is the new approach in Windows 10. The other thing you can do, is, of course, if you're dealing with files, you could search from here. So Windows 10, for example. And notice I have it searching for the files directly from the search window. Or you can go if we are talking about files and you are under, for example, a specific, let's say you're under a different folder here, you can actually go and simply type it right here. And it's going to search the whole computer or that set of folders, including subfolders from there. So that's searching for files from here. This is searching for anything, including settings or web or stuff from over here. It's a very powerful feature and very useful. In this next session, I'm going to go over a couple of things related to Windows Explorer. Windows Explorer, of course, has been around uh, for uh, many years now in the past previous versions of Windows. But uh, there are a couple of things that are uh, worth noting here that you can use in Windows 10. And to get to Windows Explorer, it's a couple of ways to get to it. Uh, you can click on Start and then go under File Explorer, or you can click here on File Explorer directly on the taskbar. So once you get to the taskbar, uh, notice one of the new things here is this Quick Access. Quick Access gives you access to 
recent frequent folders that you have used in this computer, recent files as well in the computer, and notice they are listed here on the left hand side as well. Now what you can do is, is that um, if you go and pick a folder from your PC here, and let's say uh, you want for example this folder to be one of your quick access folders, you can simply click on it and then right click and choose to pin it to quick access. That means it's going to add it here on the left hand side like that. So notice it's now over here or if you don't want it there anymore you can right click on it and choose to unpin it from quick access as well. The other thing that you can do is if you go here under the folder, select the folder and then click on home, this is where you can choose to pin something to the quick access uh, listing here on the left. Now, um, another thing that I'd like to cover here as we are in uh, File Explorer is uh, the ability or changing settings for viewing the folders. Now, this has been available in previous versions of Windows as well, but I'd like to cover it here because it comes in handy. What I mean is, so let's say I like to have my folders uh, like this, like this, but I don't want to see the sizes and all that stuff, and I want it by default for all across the folders. So the way to change that is by going here under view and notice you have all kinds of settings here that you can customize. So let's say I want it to be a listing like this. Now the way it works is that it will be based by folders. So if I like it by this folder to be this way, then it will stay that way. However, if I want this to be for all folders in the future, then the way to make that permanent for all folders to display this way is by going here under the view again and then clicking on options and unfortunately it's a slightly long process but you can do it and then go under change folder and search options so we're kind of changing the options for all the folders then we go here under view and we say whatever view we chose here earlier I want to apply to all the folders now click on apply to folders it says are you sure you want to do this you say yes and then click OK and now if I go to any of the folders here, so if I go to Windows Old or whatever it is, notice all my folders are listed the way I had that earlier. So that's changing the default view for all your folders in your computer. In this next session I will cover a couple of features that are available in the new browser Microsoft Edge. So we go here and open Microsoft Edge and then notice uh, it kind of has changed so the uh, the navigation bar here or the address bar it's in the very top you sometimes have to click on it otherwise you don't know that it's there so you simply have to click on the top and then it'll appear. Now on the right hand side here you have the options for the browser very similar to like Chrome what we are used to using in Chrome and notice also the settings are here in the very bottom as well. But one of the things that I wanted to show here is that, uh, and this is actually pretty cool, no other browsers uh, have this yet, is the ability to annotate on the screen. So what you can do here is you can click on make a web note and then notice it will give you the highlighting or annotation tools. So at this point what I can do is I can go and pick a color here. So let's say for making it obvious here I'm going to make it red. And now at this point I can go and highlight certain things. So if I was doing a, a demo for teaching or whatever there and I want to highlight certain things then I can simply in that page go and highlight stuff as I want. You can also use the highlighter option or annotate option. The previous one was the actual annotating option. Now to erase them you can use the eraser option here. You can also add a type note and you can also clip part of this screen and then of course you can save this web note for future reference. So this comes in as very handy and a very powerful tool particularly if you're teaching and you're going to specific sites or specific things that you want to demonstrate and show and you basically can annotate directly on the screen. Then when you're done with it you press the exit button on the top right and that should do it.
This next feature is using the Microsoft Store. Of course, that's one of the primary reasons of having Windows 10 is to have the ability to download apps very similar to like Google Play or the Apple App Store. So Microsoft has its own as well. So to get to the App Store for downloading various apps, you simply go to the search option here, press the Windows key on the keyboard, and I could say Store. And here is the Trusted Windows Store. And then you can basically search for the app that you want to install. And pretty much just like uh, in Android or the Apple Store, you'd install it in your computer. So it's as simple as that. I'm not going to go any further in detail, but I needed to demonstrate that it's one of the features and one of the capabilities of Windows 10. One of the nice things in Windows 10 is the consolidated settings. If you remember in Windows 8, the settings, some of the settings were under the charms area, some of the settings were in control panel and so on. But in Windows 10, it appears that all the settings are pretty much under settings. So to get to them, you click on start and then you go under settings here. And then they are grouped in the variety, very similar to like the old control panel. Now, one of the nice features, and this is one thing to remember about Windows 10, is the ability to search for anything, whether you're in settings to search for a specific setting, or to search for a file, or to search for applications, or things like that, basically use the searching capabilities. So here, for example, instead of you having to know where to go for changing the password and so on, you could simply type here, password. And notice you have all the things that are related to changing the password or resetting the password. The idea here or the concept that I would like to cover or to emphasize is searching. Now the same searching can be done also from the search box here as well. So for example, if we wanted to know how to change the password, we can just type here change password. And notice it will take us to the same thing as, as earlier. So remember, you can do the searching from the settings area, or you can do it from the search area here in the bottom. Now, for those of you, if you are wondering what happened to the control panel, you can still access it. And you can go here under the Start menu, right-click on it. Again, the trick there is right-click, and then choose Control Panel. It will give you the similar view like before, where you have here to, to use large icons, small icons, and so on. And you can search for stuff here as well. And if you want all the icons, very similar to what you're used to in Windows 7, it's over here under the control panel. Now, again, to get to the control panel is under the start menu here by right clicking, or you can simply, again, type in the search box control panel, and it will bring up the control panel app. So that's using the settings and the control panel. In this next session, I'm going to talk about customizing stuff in your desktop. So basically customizing the theme on the desktop, customizing the font size and so on. So to customize anything, it's a couple ways to do it. One of the easiest would be to right click on the desktop and then choose to personalize. So if you can click here, uh, if you go and click on personalize from here, you can go under background and then you can choose a different picture as the background, for example, that you might prefer. Then it's going to change also the theme or the colors to match that uh, background so you can choose to fit it here also the size of it and such as far as the colors you can choose to automatically pick an accent color from your background so that means that if you use a different background you like also the shading and the color types to be changing you can simply it will automatically adjust that if you don't like that feature you can turn it off right here and notice there are other options here as well, including the high contrast settings. As far as the lock screen, you can also choose as to what you want for the lock screen. If you like a specific picture, it will be you can pick your picture. If you want the window spotlight, I actually like that. It gives you pictures automatically and are updated from time to time automatically. And the other thing that you can do here is that you, is that you can customize the theme. So if you click here under themes and we go under theme settings, this is where you can customize it. It's kind of like the look and feel of Windows 7 actually. 
So here is where you can change, for example, download new themes. You can go and get more themes online. You can change what kind of color you want to have applied to it. You can change also additional settings such as the desktop icons, the pointers, and all that type of thing. Again, if you're not sure as far as one of the options, for example, desktop icons or so on, in the future you want to change something that uh, you don't know where that setting is, of course, make sure you search it in the search window below here. So those are some of the options on how to personalize the desktop and how to personalize this. Now, if you probably noticed here that uh, I do not have any icons on the desktop. The reason for that is because I hid them earlier as I started this recording. To hide and show the icons on the desktop, you can simply click on view here and choose to show the desktop icons and then all of those are back and showing. In this next video, I'm going to demonstrate how to connect your laptop or your computer to a projector or to a second display. Now, this feature has been around in the previous versions of Windows as well, but um, it's just a slight difference as to where it's located in Windows 10. So there are a couple ways to utilize those features. So now in Windows 10, the way to do it is by going here. One of the ways to do it is to go here under the Action Center, as they call it now and then click under project. Once you click on project, you're uh, asked as to where you want to project your screen. Now duplicate, of course, it will duplicate it to the projector. That's what typically you want in a, a presentation, even though sometimes you want to use a presentation mode and that's a different story. The other option is to use extend. Extend is if you have two uh, monitors connected to your computer, in the case of a laptop or a desktop that has two video inputs, then you can use the various applications, one on one desktop or one on one monitor and the other one on the other monitor. It basically are extending your desktop and you can move the mouse from monitor one to monitor two and so on, back and forth and so on. So that's uh, the functionality here. So all you would have to do in these cases is simply press extend and then it will connect. Now in this case, as I'm doing this recording, I don't have one of the second displays connected, so it's not going to do much for us. Now the other option is, is that, and this works in Windows 7, 8 and so on, is but if you press the Windows key and then P, that will bring exactly that same option up. So this is kind of the trick that you can utilize uh, uh, Windows key P for projector. And it will bring this up and then you choose the right option and you're up and running rather than have to ask somebody. In this brief session, I'm going to uh, briefly demonstrate how to switch to a tablet mode in Windows 10. So Windows 10 is designed to be used um, on a desktop, it's designed to be used on tablets, and it's also designed to be used in mobile devices. So if you're if you have one of those laptops that it can convert also into a tablet by simply detaching it or flipping it or what rotating it or whatever you do there, one of the features in Windows 10 is is that you can change the mode from a regular PC mode to a tablet mode and the way you do that one of the ways to do that is by going here under the action center and then click on the tablet mode now notice that there are a couple other options here as well like you can use the rotation of course you can then you lock the rotation and so on but we want to click here on tablet mode so once you click on tablet mode at this point it's expecting us to utilize pretty much the touch on the screen here. So if I slide from left to right here, it switches between the various applications that I have opened in this, uh, at this point. Now to open one of those applications, it's basically you just tap on one of the applications, open it up, and there you have it. Now the other thing that you can do is use the various, the various swipe actions. So for example, from the left swipe, that gives you the preview that or the task view it was this thing down here similar to this thing down here but it's much easier to just flip between one and the other and I'm just swiping from left to right outside of the screen edge the other thing is uh, that if you go from from the right edge here and you go to the left then this gives you the action center where you can kind of do uh, con uh, have some of those controls or various settings 
and configure uh, Wi-Fi and things of that nature that you see here in the bottom right. Now if you go from top to bottom, swiping from top to bottom, and you go all the way toward the bottom, that will close actually the existing application. So these were a couple changes that Microsoft did in Windows 10 and in Windows 8 you had the corner uh, touches that they used to do. So those are swipe uh, thingies that you had to do before. Now to switch back to regular mode, you go here under the action center and then uncheck tablet mode and now you're back to using this in a PC, regular PC mode. So it's very useful if you have uh, the tablet functionality in your computer as well. In this session I'm going to demonstrate very briefly as to how to use the Windows Snap feature. This has been around in Windows 8 as well, uh, but uh, of course it's in Windows 10, so why not explain it, uh, cover it a little bit here. So the Snap feature is basically if you move your window, if you move a specific uh, window to a specific spot, then it will snap it. It will basically, depending on what you're doing, so if you touch this toward the top, then it's going to make it full screen. If um, I hold down the Windows key and press L, it'll resize this window exactly half of the screen on the left. Then I could open something else here and I could resize that to be exactly half of the screen on the right hand side. So again, to resize this, uh, you hold down the Windows key and you press the left arrow that sends it to the left. If you choose to And then to move a specific window to the right, press Windows key and then the right arrow on the keyboard. So that's briefly the snap feature in Windows 10. Uh, that's the easiest, the Windows key, left arrow, Windows key, right arrow. In this next session, I'm going to talk about uh, how to use the snipping tool in Windows. This has been available in previous versions ever since Windows 7, but uh, it comes in handy in Windows 10 as well. So to use the snipping tool, you can simply press the Windows key and then just search for snipping tool. It will open up. And then at this point, the way the snipping tool is basically what it does is that you can select a portion of the screen so it could be a screenshot that you want to send to somebody or it can be part of a document or whatever that you want to mail to somebody. So what you can do is basically just simply snip a portion of that screen. So you can basically open up the snipping tool, click on new, and then at this point we can capture any part of this screen. So in this case, let's say we want to we can capture any part of the screen. You just simply select whatever portion of the screen that you want to capture. And my mouse is not working well here, but um, basically you can uh, capture any portion of the screen here. And then you can even highlight or mark it or whatever you need to do to it and then you save it or you can simply copy it and then once you copy it you can just simply paste it into a document or you can paste it into an email that you are sending to someone so it comes in handy and notice there are additional tools as well so this comes in handy also for designing manuals and things of that nature In this next session, I'm going to demonstrate how to change the default printer in Windows. It, I'm including it here because it's a commonly used feature in case somebody does not know how to use it or just wants to know how to do it in Windows 10. So to change the, the default printer, basically you can go to the search window here, I press the Windows key or you just start typing and then just type printer. So if you go here under the printers and uh, devices and printers, notice this is very similar to the to before what you're used to seeing. Now at this point you can simply right click. Let's assume this is my printer that I want to set as the default. Right click on it and choose set as default printer. Now from now on anything that I want to print that's going to be the first choice for me to print. And notice it has a check mark.
in this session I'm going to cover a couple of the options on making sure your computer is secure. So even though Windows 10 is uh, constantly updated uh, automatically by Microsoft, it's probably good to uh, verify and check whether there are any new updates that are available. So to get to Windows updates, there's a couple ways that you can get to it. You can either go here under Start and then Settings and then find Windows Update here under Security, Update and Security. Or the other option is by simply pressing the Windows key on the keyboard and then typing under the search box here, check for updates. Then at this point, if Windows updates are waiting for you to install them, then you can simply click to install them now. If you need to check on updating or to check for updates, then there will be a checkbox right here. So to install them, just press install now and uh, note that sometimes they may take a little longer to install so don't install them probably in the middle of the day or only you need the computer for the next 10 minutes and that's why i'm not installing it right now because apparently this is a pretty a big update uh, that potentially will delay this recording so that's one option so making sure that windows is up to date the other option is is that windows 10 comes with a built-in windows defender so uh, if you're not using any other antivirus software, it might be worthy to go in to check and run some scans every so often or schedule scans and things of that nature. So to get to Windows Defender, one of the easiest ways is to press the uh, Windows key or click on the search button here and just type Windows Defender. You open Windows Defender here. And notice it looks very uh, similar to uh, Microsoft Security Essentials that used to be in the previous versions of Windows for free that you can download for free. Now at this stage, what you can do is you can do a quick scan or you can do an update it manually, or you can go here under custom settings and run a custom scan for your computer, or you can go here under settings and you can change and tweak additional settings. So that's how you check for updates and that's how you check and configure Windows Defender. In this session, I'm going to go over how to remove applications from your computer in Windows 10. So how do we get to add or remove programs basically? So what you do is here under the search option or under the Windows key, just simply start typing. Type in there, add or remove programs. So notice I just typed add or, and then the next thing that came up is add remove programs. Now at this point, it'll give us all the apps that have been installed in this computer. And all that we need to do is basically go to any of these apps that we do not want and choose to remove them. In this case, uh, I don't really think I'm using or I want this uh, calendar. So let's say I do not want this uh, Microsoft app here, the Microsoft Money. I can simply click on uninstall and it will uninstall this app from your computer. Now it may be helpful to, uh, when you buy a new computer, to take note of what apps are in your computer and then uh, as you go uh, forward and you notice that there are problems with the computer, maybe you go and remove any unnecessary apps. A lot of things there will be with the ser word search that you could potentially remove safely or anything that you don't identify, you could remove them as well from here. So that's how you remove um, unnecessary apps from your computer in Windows 10. In this session, I'm going to go over uh, using the task manager to identify problems with your computer and uh, potentially resolve them or see the computer performance and things of that nature. So basically, the way it works is, is that you can either search for task manager here. That's one way. Or you can right click on the, on the uh, task bar and then choose task manager here in the bottom. Uh, the first time you open it, it's, what's going to happen is it's going to display here uh, very minimal details. What you can do is click on more details and then it will display a lot of other options here as to what apps are running and what modules and background processes and things of that nature. Now, uh, let's say that I wanted to terminate a specific application. Notice that the CPU here, it's running 
currently at 11% uh, among all the apps here. So that's how you'll identify as to which app is slowing down your computer. Typically, your computer should be running between 4 and 10%. Now, in my case here, I'm live recording as well, so it's putting some load on the computer, but yet it's, notice it's about 7%. If it's running more consistently, more than 15%, then there is an app or something that is um, hanging up your computer or uh, causing problems in your computer. And then the consideration is to look it up on Google and see what you find out there as far as with that specific app what the problem might be maybe you remove it and uninstall it and, re and reinstall it again or uh, things of that nature it could be sometimes spyware and things of that nature as well so notice again you can sort this by the cpu to identify as to which ta what is taking the most uh, power or cpu processing in your computer you can tap here on memory as well and see what application is using the most memory in your computer as well. And also if something is utilizing the disk more than they should, you can identify it from here. Now, if you wanted to terminate an application, so let's say I wanted to terminate this application right here. Let's assume this is the one creating problems. I can select it and then click on end task. Typically it will look like something like this. Now, for me, it's becoming bigger because of the resolution, the screen resolution. So I click on the app here and then choose end task and that will kill that specific task. Now, the next thing that you can do here is you can go under performance. Under performance, it's going to give you a chart or a graph here as to what's running in the computer, the CPU history, how many processors and that type of stuff that you have in the computer and um, the memory utilization as well that uh, note that i'm consistently using here about uh, 30 to 40 percent of the memory it seems like and then you can see the disk utilization the spikes in there as well and uh, basically identify where the bottlenecks are now in some cases you might notice that uh, if you're running at 100 percent uh, memory usage then you might have to identify what application is chewing up that memory or potentially you might need more uh, memory in your computer and uh, that's one way to troubleshoot whether it's a memory issue or, or so uh, the other thing that you can check here is under app history you can see as to what has been using quite a bit of the network bandwidth or cpu time and so on that basically gives you a history from for a specific date range here or a specific day the other thing here under startup under startup you can identify what programs are starting automatically as soon as you reboot the computer and you can uh, choose to enable or disable them from this screen so for example this here actually right click under status here and let's say i want to disable this you can simply choose disable and now when the next time you restart the computer it's going to actually not start automatically unless it's virus virus or spyware notice the button is also down here at the bottom after you choose to enable or disable it as well under users you can see different users on the system how much resources they are using and then you can also go and see here the different details for every specific app that is running in the computer so you check for example the memory and so on it's a little bit more condensed in here as to what's running but it's basically going to list all the processes in the computer under services these are services that are running in the background you can see what's running and what's running in the computer now um, my suggestion here would be not to tinker with this area because specifically if you're stopping one of the services that needs to be running then you will potentially cause problems if you know what it is or what it should be, you can Google it, whether it should be running or not, and uh, that type of thing. Um, under performance, I want to mention one other thing here, which is very uh, useful as a troubleshooting tool. And that is under the performance tab here on the very bottom. Notice there is an open resource monitor. If I open resource monitor here, it's going to give me a lot more statistics. For example, this is a quad core uh, computer it's going to list all the processes that are running it's going to give me a process id and what's uh, causing issues and things of that nature 
I can go and check this as an overview for all the component or majority of components in the computer. I can go under the CPU and just see the CPU stuff, CPU related memory as to what applications are taking the most memory and so on. And um, disk performance, network utilization, if you wanted to identify as to what process might be using a lot of the bandwidth, this is how you can identify it as well. So the resource mon monitor, it's really powerful, like I said, and you can somewhat see, you know, identifying issues, identifying what's happening in your computer and potentially then resolving. So those are some of the areas that you can utilize a task manager to know what's happening in your computer. This is one of the final videos on the series on Windows 10 and in this session I'm going to cover how to customize the privacy settings in Windows 10. Windows 10, as it came out for the first year, it was offered for free for home users as a free upgrade from Windows Vista, Windows 7, and Windows 8. And uh, one of the things is that Windows 10, uh, what uh, they are trying to achieve is uh, something very similar to what Google now does in giving you customized information and customized feedback and even advertising based on your searching cap um, habits and also keystrokes, things that you type and uh, things of that nature. So a lot of users are concerned about their privacy in Windows 10, even though it is free. For those of you that are concerned, you can customize the following settings. So what we do is we uh, press the Windows key or in the search bar, just type privacy. It's worth to note that uh, there are some settings when you first set up the computer that uh, you can um, disable and you should disable. And I'm gonna post some of the pictures in here for you to view when you set up the windows for the first time or when you upgrade it. So this is one of the first screens after you install it. And then on the second screen, you need to choose those options off. In the third screen, and then the fourth screen here is customize those options. And then on the fifth screen, choose to skip the Cortana setup. So as you can see, those are some of the settings that uh, you, you should be disabling or you can disable when you first set up uh, the computer. Now, if you're here in Windows and uh, you have installed the computer and you want to double check your privacy settings, like I mentioned, you under the search option here, you can uh, simply type privacy and then you go under privacy settings. Under privacy settings, now this is where you can go through each one of those options and uh, turn on or off certain things. For example, here, uh, let apps use my advertising ID for experiencing a cross and so on. I have that turned off. I don't want, I don't use the apps from the App Store and uh, you may want to turn that off if you don't use the apps from the App Store. Turn on the smart filter to check for URLs. That will probably be a helpful link to have on in your computer. Send the Microsoft info about what I write and what, I, what helps in typing and all that type of thing. Uh, that is grayed out in my case. Most uh, that is because I have Cortana disabled, and um, but uh, my suggestion, or in my case, I have it off. I'm not using that functionality. Let websites provide locally relevant content by accessing my language list. Even in that case, I have it uh, turned off. You can also uh, check in here and uh, customize the advertising and other personalization information that Microsoft has on you. And I believe you have to log into your Microsoft account for that. Now, the other thing that you can go and cha uh, change here under privacy, and I'd recommend that you change, is uh, you go here under the device location and it is uh, set to off. Now, what that does is that basically by default, it's going to track as to where your computer is. Uh, some of them, they have GPS capabilities. Some of the other ones, uh, capabilities, it can just track your location either on Wi-Fi or whatever other means there. So you can clear the location history if you prefer to. Also, you can choose to turn off the location for multiple apps here, for example, like camera, uh, Cortana, email, calendar, maps, and all that type of thing if you choose to uh, disable those, of course. If you choose to use them, then of course you don't disable them here. 
camera as well you can uh, uh, you don't let the apps use your camera unless they have your approval for specific things you can choose to enable them now of course i'd have to turn it on over here and then turn it back off over here For microphone as well, you could turn off the microphone. For speech and inking and typing, this is, it's basically getting to know me. That's what Microsoft calls it. Uh, they want to get to know you, what your calendar is, what you're doing, what you're searching for, what you're typing and all that stuff. So you can simply, uh, if you're concerned about your privacy, you can choose to turn that off. And in my case, it is off already. The other thing is under account information, let apps access my name, my picture, my other contact information. You could turn that off as well. Under contacts, you can determine whether if certain apps can access your contacts, your calendar the same way, your call history if it's connected through a messaging service like Skype or through your cell phone and things of that nature, your email, messaging, the radios what can control the radios in your laptop for example the wi-fi and uh, and so now be careful with that because you could turn it off over here but then some app that needs it or windows that needs it it's going to not work and then other devices whether you want to sync with other devices and so on you can turn that off if you need to and here's another one that you might want to consider turning uh, off or down <laughs> to some extent. By default, Windows will send full diagnostic data to Microsoft, like more than probably you need. So my suggestion would be to change this to basic, to send to Microsoft only when something happens on your computer, it sends only the basic stuff and not background apps what can run in the background what is not allowed to be running in the background and so on so you can just choose to turn those on and off as well so that's uh, some of the privacy settings over here now the other thing that you might want to consider is wireless settings under uh, change wireless settings over here there is also options that you can choose to customize for example make this pc discoverable you could choose to have that as off and uh, that's one setting here another one is the wi-fi sense under wi-fi this is another uh, consideration to keep in mind uh, connect to suggested wife open wi hotspots uh, maybe not uh, unless you choose to connect to something you don't want to connect automatically connect uh, to networks shared by my contacts uh, that's if you're concerned about privacy you don't want that paid wi-fi services and you can see those options from there so those are basically some of the settings that you can customize in um, as when it comes to privacy the other thing that you can do is if you go here under settings and you search for privacy it will also give you a listing of all the different types of privacy. So it's kind of a different look at it. Um, it's basically what we checked earlier, but uh, you can, let's say you're concerned about email privacy. Well, you can just click on it and it will give you pretty much a similar window what you had earlier. So hopefully that helps. And um, it's basically just enhanced services the reason for collecting the information is particularly for enhanced providing you customized information and enhanced services as you utilize the computer and the searching capabilities of windows and last but not least one of the things to do in windows 10 as i finish this tutorial on windows 10 is uh, lock your computer if you leave your desk at any point in time so to lock your computer you can simply uh, do it very easily uh, by pressing the windows key hold down the windows key and then press l and at that point what's going to happen is it's uh, if you tap on it to come back you'll have to put password again so you enter your password 
and you're back to where you left off. So that's how you lock your computer. And then finally is uh, shutting down your computer. You can uh, click on the start menu here and choose shut down or choose power and then shut down. The other thing you can do is you can right click and choose shut down and sign out as well. So that is it on Windows 10. I hope uh, it was helpful and uh, feel free to subscribe to this channel if this is helpful, if this information is helpful.